Whoa, whoa, whoa. So let me get this straight. You want to be as good as the doc? Great. Welcome to the Champions Club. All right, what's up, guys? My name is, uh, not Dr. Disrespect. Whew. Oh, my, dude, this is so much better. But I hope you guys like that. Because I had to shave my beard for it, and now my girlfriend is not too happy with me. But that's besides the point. My name is Jacques GQ, and today we're going to be covering how to edit like Dr. Disrespect. But before we start, I want to go ahead and give some props to Dr. Disrespect's like per whole production crew, dude. He's got a couple of guys. If I can find their Twitters, I'm going to put them on screen here. And uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and go over how we're going to go over what we're going over. And also, I want to clarify, I cannot do every effect that happens in every single one of Dr. Disrespect's videos. Because, I mean, dude, we'd be here forever. But I'm going to cover the important ones and ones that are very oftenly used. And I think that add a lot of production quality to his video. And the effects that we're going to be going over in this video are his glowing text, his speed ramps, his zooms, and his transitions. And all with the the uh, the time frames or, or times that they're gonna be in the video so you can you, you can skip around and I'm gonna quit talking now all right so we're gonna begin with this glowing text it took me an extremely long time to figure out it actually had me banging my head against the wall dude I was upset but I have figured it out it's a lava effects and it's probably the most complex thing that we're covering in this whole video so to begin, you're going to want to go ahead and hit your T key, which will bring up your text tool. You're going to click anywhere in your preview window, which will add a graphic here for text. And we can have it say anything. So let's say uh, Dr. Disrespect. Then click back on your timeline, hit your V key to hit the selection tool. And we can just grab this text and make it a little bit bigger for ourselves here. Also trim down this text because we don't really need all of this. Now we're going to put the extremely long list of effects on this thing. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and look for a drop shadow, drag and drop it onto your text here. Next, we're going to look for one called a uh, brightness and contrast. Go ahead and drag that onto your text. Next, we're going to be looking for a VR glow. Go ahead and drag that onto your text. And then lastly, we're going to look for one called grid. We're going to go ahead and drag that onto our text. Next, come up here into the top left corner of your screen where you have your effects controls. Go ahead and hit these arrows next to all these effects so we can make it look a little bit cleaner and have a make it clear as how we're going to go through these things. Go ahead and move drop shadow to the top. Brightness and contrast right under that. VR glow right under that. So we really don't have to mess with drop shadow, but we're going to go ahead and start with brightness and contrast. Uh, now, this is like the, the glowing effect, basically, that goes on with his text. So we can make it pretty random here. We're going to go to zero. Uh, we're going to set 100 here. We're going to go forward a little bit more. We're going to set another one to 35. Go ahead and forward to 75 and just really put in a lot of values where it's escalating the brightness, declining it, and just going back and forth however you please. In my case, I'm just going to take these keyframes and then copy them over because I think it's fine how it is. And that's all you have to do for your brightness and contrast. Next, we're going to move to our VR glow. Now, in this VR glow, you're going to want to set your luma threshold to zero, your glowing radius to about 65, set your brightness to eight, and then your saturation to 10. Now, this is the time you're going to be choosing basically the color that your text is glowing. So you go ahead and hit the use tint color. And then in our case, we're going to make it red. So we're going to grab this, move it all the way in the right hand corner down there. Hit OK. And that's all you have to do for the VR glow. Lastly, we're going to move down to grid. So to begin, you're going to want to go to size form and go ahead and move that down to width and height sliders. Then for width, you're going to want to slide this one up to like dummy amounts. We're actually going to want about 2,500 roughly. And essentially what this is going to do is get rid of a lot of, uh, of these vertical lines because that's not what we want. But then also go here to this left anchor point value and then move it over to where that line isn't on your screen anymore. Next, we're going to go to height. And this is going to be basically the, the width or the height obviously between the lines in my case we want a little bit of space but not too much i think seven would be a good value here uh, we're going to move this border value to three now you're going to go to color and change that to black and then go down to opacity let's say roughly about 40 which is going to be good and then go to blending mode and go all the way down to luminosity and there you go now we have our nice little glowing dr disrespect and if you want to add a little bit more to it you can go ahead and come to the effects in the top right again and look for an effect called noise go ahead and drag that on top of the dr disrespect drag that down a little bit more right here between vr glow and grid and then change this value to eh, roughly 45 ish it's not going to add a lot but it's that little bit more that you can add to just spice it up a bit and i also want to be clear to change the color of this text it's pretty simple just go to vr glow uh, let's say we're going to do like a goldish color so let's go ahead and select that go to yellow here then we're going to go down to our text change the color of that to this 
yellowish color, like I said, but also make sure that it's a lighter yellow color because trust me, it'll make the light seem like it's glowing more. Then hit OK. And we have a nice yellow glowing text. And boom, here you go. Here's our nice glowing neon text. And next, we're gonna be covering a speed ramp. So basically, if your clip is very long, we can kind of condense it down while still keeping up the pace of the video. All right, so to work on the speed ramping effect, I already have some Call of Duty footage here in the background that we can mess around with. And to begin, we're gonna go ahead and hit to the project, uh, the project files down here in the bottom left corner of your screen. Right click, go to new item, go to color mat, go to change this time base to 60 frames per second. And then we're also gonna make this black. Go ahead and click that, hit OK. Next, we're gonna go into and select another new item. Go ahead and go to adjustment layer, make another one of those for 60 frames per second. Now go ahead and grab that color mat and adjustment layer you just made and drag them onto your timeline. So first we're gonna be messing with the color mat. Go ahead and go to the effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and look for an effect called noise. Grab that, drag it onto the color mat and then look for one more called wave warp and then drag that also on top of your color mat. All right, so for noise, we're gonna go ahead and drag this literally as far up as we can do 100. Uh, we're gonna turn off this use color noise and then minimize that because we're done with noise now. And we're gonna move on to wave warp. We're gonna be changing our wave type down to sawtooth. We're gonna be changing our wave height dummy high, like actually ridiculous. And so basically we have these uh, streaks uh, running across our screen like little poles. We're gonna be changing our wave width to uh, basically as many as you want coming on screen here. I'm gonna choose about two. Uh, and then our direction, we're gonna be changing this to 180. So it comes as like a, a flat basically. And as we see here, we kind of have this little clipping error. So we're gonna be changing our wave height just a bit more. So it's kind of diagonal and we don't have anything clipping on screen there. And next we have wave speed. Now you can adjust this as much as you want. So if you want these waves coming onto your screen like really quickly, keep it high. If you want it kind of slower, just change it down. We're gonna go ahead and set ours at like 0.5. And that's all you have to do for wave warp. So go ahead, hit this arrow on the left here. But we're also gonna change our opacity. So to unanimate this basically, hit this stopwatch. And then we're gonna change this to roughly about, I think 30 would be good so see you can see it here it's still on the screen but it's not like really overpowering and then there you go that's all you have to do for your color mat next we're going to be moving on to our adjustment layer now we're going to go back up to the top right and to our effects tab we're going to be looking for a gaussian blur you're going to be looking for a lumetri color there you go sorry it's a little hard to pronounce go ahead and drag that onto your adjustment layer and then you're also gonna be looking for a VR digital glitch and then drag that onto your adjustment layer. Now we don't want a lot to do with this Gaussian blur. So we're only gonna turn this up to about, uh, let's see how 10 looks. 10 is good. You just want it as a little bit more of a spice on top effect. Go ahead and minimize it with that arrow. Now we're gonna go down to Lumetri Color. Go ahead and go to the Creative tab, hit this arrow, go down a bit more, and then you're gonna just wanna splice your vibrance all the way up. Now we're done with Lumetri Color, so we can go ahead and close out of that. And we have our digital glitch, which is already here, so we don't really need to animate that. And uh, boom, there you go. Now this is basically the effect that you wanna have going on during your speed duration or your speed ramp, but it's not any faster. So to go ahead and speed this up, you're gonna right click on your main clip that you're going to have sped up. You're gonna to go to speed duration. And in my case, I'm gonna speed this up to 300%, so it's gonna play three times as quickly. Or you can go to the duration down here and say if you have a specific time that you want your clip to be playing at high speed, but you want the entire clip to play, just go ahead and type in the exact time you want in the little duration. Go ahead and hit okay. And then obviously you can see it kind of scrunches down our clip here, move it to where it lines up a bit. And boom, there you go. This is our speed ramping that we just made. Like I said, it's very nice to keep the pace of the video up if something's kind of slowing down a bit in your clip. All right, and next we're gonna be covering this nice Bezier zoom that does a very good job at basically drawing the attention to whatever you want on your subject. So let's say a face cam or something popping up on screen or let's say my watch here. I watched my wristband here basically let you highlight the part of your video that you want to have people focus on now this one is super simple go to your project files at the bottom left here where we already have this adjustment layer grab one and move it on top of this clip you already have cut it down because we don't need all of that room now go up to effects on the top right and look for an effect called transform under distort go ahead and drag that on top of your adjustment layer now we're going to go down here to transform and we're going to be animating the scale and the position Next, you're gonna move your playhead up a bit. And uh, let's say in this frame, we wanna focus on uh, this map right here. Let's say we wanna focus on the mini map. So to do so, we're gonna zoom in as much as we need to. Then we're gonna grab our X and our Y coordinates and kind of just adjust them until we're in the right spot. So we can see the corner of the video here, just kind of line that up to where you don't see that black line anymore. Then grab your Y value and move all the way up until you see the mini map. Now, we can go ahead and hit these arrows right next to position and scale. We're gonna grab these keyframes, 
and then grab this circle that's near the keyframe here, drag it as far down and as far right as you can, hit this other keyframe, grab this circle as far left and as far down as you can. Same thing with these scale keyframes, except there's one thing you have to keep in mind. You can move these keyframes below this line on the right here, and you don't want to do that. You want to have these as far left as you can, but also line them up to where they're about even with that line on the right. Do the same thing with this left keyframe, except do it to where it's lined up with the left line and kind of line up these circles to where you can basically see a hole straight through them. Also, one more thing here to kind of spice up your zoom a bit. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and go down to use composition shutter angle under transform. Go ahead and click that and then change the shutter angle value to 180. What that'll do is add the nice motion blur. So whenever it's zooming in and zooming out, it's kind of a hair blurry and a lot softer on the eyes. Now, if we look at it in our preview window, there you go, a nice bezier. Now let's say you want to do the same thing here, but kind of zooming out. So to zoom out, all you have to do is uh, use this arrow here next to position to move back to your uh, next position keyframe. Use the right arrow key on your keyboard to move over one more frame and add one more keyframe. Trust me, and this is just basically to help the keyframes not basically move on their own. It's kind of weird, but trust me, it happens. Then you're going to move your playhead forward a bit and you're going to set one more keyframe here for the position, one more keyframe for uh, scale here. Then move the playhead forward a little bit more and then hit the reset button for both scale and position. And then that will just basically move you back to wherever you started. Then we're going to do the same thing we did originally with these other keyframes and move the uh, move these circles as needed. And then here you go. Here's our nice Bezier zoom in, zoom out to help focus on whatever you need to be focusing on in your video. And uh, the next effect we're gonna be covering is a lot of these transitions that Doc uses. He uses a lot, but we're gonna be covering two of them. And once you understand how these two work, you can apply them in a lot of different ways. First of which we're gonna be covering is this like swipe right transition. It's super simple, but we're gonna do it basically in our way to where it swipes up. And trust me, you're gonna see why we're doing that in here in a minute. So to begin this, we're gonna be adding in another adjustment layer here, and then we're gonna hold down our Alt key, drag up on this adjustment layer to add a second one in. Then go ahead and trim these adjustment layers down because we're not gonna need all of that. Next, go to the effects on top right, and we're gonna be looking for an effect called Replicate. You're gonna go ahead and grab that and move it onto your bottom adjustment layer. Then you come to your effects controls on your top left and change it from that number from two to three. Now we're gonna go back to the effects in the top right and look for our best friend, Transform. Go ahead and drag that on top of your second adjustment layer. Now to understand what we're doing, see how we have this like nine video square here? Essentially what we're gonna do is zoom in on one of these squares, then move to another square. Now you can use this in many different ways. You can do it diagonally, vertically, horizontally, however you wish. And that's why I chose this one is because how versatile it is. So to begin on this like nice swiping thing, we're gonna go ahead and hit our top adjustment layer, go to effects in the top left and scroll down a little bit. And we have transform here. Now we're gonna change our scale to 300. And what this will do is kind of zoom us in on that middle, uh, that middle square. Now to do a nice swipe down, we're going to be animating position. So go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to position. And I've already looked up this value, so we don't have to waste a lot of time doing it. You're going to go to this uh, 450 Y value and change it to 620. And that'll basically line you up with the top square and the nine video square. Now we're going to move our playhead forward a bit and we're going to change that value again. And we're going to change it to negative 540. And what this will do is move you to the all the way down to the bottom middle square. Then we're gonna do the same thing that we did with our Bezier zoom. We're gonna grab these circles and line them up nice and pretty, but there is one more thing we're gonna do. We're gonna scroll on down. We're gonna hit this box that says use composition shutter angle. We're gonna change our shutter angle to uh, about 180 here. That'll be nice. And then that'll give us a nice motion blur whenever we're uh, basically shifting between the squares. And here you go, here's our nice swipe transition. And the last and final transition we're gonna be covering is this one right here. Now, does it look a little familiar to you? Because basically we've already used two of these effects and two previous effects. We can see that the video basically moves and slides down and also has this like static glitch effect going on. We just cover the nice swipe and then also we just use a static glitch effect and our speed ramp. So now all we have to do is literally just copy them over and uh, line up the clips. So since it's the exact same, I'm going to go ahead and grab these layers right here and then move them over to the clip that we're going to be adjusting. Now, there is a little bit more that we're going to be adding to this transition. Uh, basically, we're going to take one of those adjustment layers we've already made. Go ahead and drag it on top here and trim it down. Then we're going to go to the effects in the top right and we're going to look for chromatic aberrations. 
You're gonna go to the effects in the top right again. You're gonna type in VR, and then you're gonna see all these under immersive video. You're gonna wanna grab VR chromatic aberrations and drag it onto the adjustment layer. And then you're also gonna wanna go ahead and grab VR digital glitch and drag it onto the same adjustment layer. Now, essentially what this will do is add a nice little glitch effect to change it up a bit. And then the color aberrations will add that nice color change that's going on during the effect. But I do wanna add a little bit to the chromatic aberration. So at the beginning of the transition, there's not really really any change at the height of the transition there's a lot of color change and at the end of the transition there's no more color change now you do want to line this up with the transition like I said so click on the adjustment layer where the uh, movement is happening with the transform line your playhead up in the, the center of this peak basically because that's where the height of the motion is then click your adjustment layer where your chromatic aberrations is go to the effects controls on the top left and then you're gonna want to put a point here for red green and blue now you're going to want to move your playhead forward a bit you know it's near the uh, beginning of the transition and you're going to change this value to zero and change this value to zero then you're going to move forward a bit more towards the end of the transition and then change these values back to zero now as i said this chromatic aberration will kind of just change the color shifting that's going on during the transition and then give it that nice like glitch effect sort of and there you go, that's the final effect we're gonna be covering for this video. But as I said earlier, I wanna give a lot of props to Doc's production team. They do an extremely well job at what they do, making these videos and his streams just very high quality overall. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below if there's somebody else or some effect you want me to cover in a future video. And uh, go ahead and check out my main channel where I put a lot of these effects into use. And until next time, peace. There's something over here. Oh, oh my God, holy shit. Oh, what are you, bro? Dude, somebody called Shaggy.